Welcome to Cork Hunt today for September 12th, 2019. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting right now and give you my opinion on them. If you'd like to read about these stories for yourself, come up with your own opinions, I'll put a link to each story I talk about in the show notes down below where you can read them for yourself and leave us a comment with what you think. Now, if you're new here, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, helps us a lot because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we're doing here. And hopefully I can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV and still watch the shows you enjoy. Well, real quick, before we get into the news today, and there's a ton of it, special thank you to everybody. We hit 100,000 subscribers yesterday. Cannot believe it. Absolutely shocked at how fast that happened. I honestly never dreamed it would happen. So thank you to everybody who subscribed. We really appreciate it. And we'll let you know when that um, plaque comes, maybe we'll do a little unboxing, a little something special here, maybe a giveaway when that comes, but we'll see. So check back, and again, thank you. I cannot say thank you enough. None of this would be possible without you. All right, let's get into it, um, starting with the deals of the day. Uh, real quick, uh, one deal from yesterday, the Amazon um, Prime Day pricing is back on the Fire TV Stick 4K. Now you do need a promo code, Find that promo code in the link down below. But I got some um, questions about this because some people can't get it, some people can't. Yes, it seems like most people can get this promo code. I don't know why some don't. Amazon has not said how you qualify or how you don't. Uh, it, it works, I can see it works and I can see it worked for us. Um, but unfortunately, if it doesn't work for you, that's just how Amazon does a lot of these codes. Sometimes it has to do with you've taken a similar deal in the past Sometimes there was some other requirement you didn't meet. So check it out, link in the show notes down below um, if you wanna get a Fire TV stick for $24.99 plus half off of Philo for two months. Full price thereafter. All right, uh, right off the bat we have um, uh, also a deal on Hulu. Hulu's enhanced DVR with unlimited screens add-ons are on sale right now for a limited time. Uh, these add-ons, when they first launched, were over 10 bucks. Right now, you can get them for $4.99, down from the $9.99 they've been at recently for the first three months. With the enhanced DVR, you get the ability to fast forward, additional DVR features. With the unlimited screens, it adds the ability to have um, additional streams at once. So if you have a large family with a lot of people who want to stream all at once with Hulu, the unlimited screens add-on is a great option there, so check that out. All right. Unfortunately, I do have AT&T news. We're gonna ra race through this as quick as I can, but this is important. They sent a letter to shareholders, and if you ever really wanna know what a company is thinking or doing, see what they say to their shareholders, because there's real repercussions if they're not honest in the letters to their shareholders. And in that letter, they predict that they will be losing over 1 million TV subscribers in the third quarter of 2019. That's a jump of over 300,000. They say they predict a 300 to 350,000 um, jump um, subscriber jump in losses in the third quarter. They also are warning about additional blackouts. They say they have a lot of contracts coming up. They say they're going to continue to be aggressive in keeping the pricing down and that is going to result in more blackouts. Now we do know that Disney's warning that AT&T um, U-verse and DirecTV and AT&T TV, AT&T TV Now, et cetera, could be losing Disney channels, including ESPN here very soon. They haven't said exactly when, but they're saying um, that they're giving out warnings. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens. A million subscribers lost just from AT&T in the third quarter of 2019 will be devastating. Of course, at and is saying, hey, we want to get rid of these people. We want customers on a uh, who are not very profitable to leave, basically. They want customers who are not on promo pricing. They were very clear that they intend to continue to get customers off promo pricing, rather that be by them leaving or by them um, switching to a more expensive plan. Um, so we'll see. Now they've warned that as through 2019, a lot of these promo pricing will come to an end. And they say in 2020, that should start stabilizing. So at and is making it clear, we deliberately want a smaller um, number of subscribers, but ones that are more profitable. Which kind of feels like at and is saying to core cars, hey, if you don't want to pay a lot for TV, we just don't care about you. Now that's not what they said, but that is kind of the feeling they've been giving off. This is not new. at and CEO has talked about this for months, that they are 
looking to push people off promotional pricing. They're looking to push people off of these discounted plans to ones that are more profitable for, for them. So let me know, what do you think about this? Um, are you concerned about your pricing going up? We've seen, for example, AT&T is uh, raising the price of DirecTV's promotional pricing to now 60 bucks a month before you pay for fees and taxes and device rentals. So you gotta add all that up. Plus that is the promotional pricing. When the promotional pricing is over, it will be even higher. So let me know. Also, at and um, CFO gave an interview with Deadline. It's a very interesting interview. Highly recommend you read it. You can find the link in our post down below. But there was one specific segment of it that I thought was interesting and we um, covered where at and CFO basically said he thinks that HBO Max will be different, that HBO Max will be a different kind of service than Disney Plus and at and Plus. Uh, at and excuse me, Apple TV Plus, so many at and So it'll be very interesting to see how this will be different. Now he stopped short of saying that. He just said he thinks that they will be different, that they have something special to offer with their Warner Media content, their HBO content, and more. Now many have pushed back on HBO Max with the idea that it's gonna be at least twice, maybe three times the cost of some of its competitors. We'll have to wait and find out. at and has said this fall they'll have an official event. So let me know, what do you think HBO could do um, to make HBO Max different? What could at and pull out a hat here to make it stand out from the Disney Pluses, the ABC service, um, and a Apple TV Plus? So let me know. And also let me know what you think of their pricing structure. So let's keep moving along, because a lot to get into. You, with the Apple TV Plus announcement, there was a huge pushback on cable TV. Um, insiders. They came out again attacking core cutting with the same old argument. It just costs too much. One of the biggest tweets that kind of got fired over the week uh, was this post which listed nine streaming services and how they added up to $90. Now that does mean you're paying about an average of 10 bucks a post or a service, which really isn't too bad of a deal. But when you really get into it, you look at things like they use the most expensive package of Hulu, the commercial free one of CBS All Access, instead of listing the cheaper ad supported options, which according to Hulu, the vast majority of their subscribers get the ad supported ones out there. And they also, the reality is most cord cutters don't subscribe to nine streaming services. Um, studies have come out said four or fewer um, streaming services are the average for Americans for the vast majority. Our own survey of you, our readers, have told us that the vast majority of our readers subscribe to three or fewer, 70 some percent. 90 plus percent say they subscribe to four or fewer streaming services according to our readers. So we really break this down very aggressively looking at, okay, the average cost of cable TV according to Fortune right now is over $107 a month. Even if you did subscribe to all nine of these services, uh, you would still be saving money. And we also talk about how he included things like HBO, Showtimes, etc. These are services not included with most cable packages. So if you went back to cable for 107 bucks and wanted Stars and HBO, well, that's 20 some additional dollars. Now you're talking about $127 right there. And we go on and on breaking this out. Also, this argument a lot of the more published about how you need internet, well, the, there's actually more internet subscribers than there are TV subscribers. The vast majority of cable subscribers have internet. So this idea that you'll go back to cable, give up Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, give up your home internet, and give up HBO and all that kind of stuff, just doesn't hold water to me. So let me know, how much are you saving? I know there's always somebody, I had somebody that today is like, I'm a cable subscriber, but you can't save money with cord cutting. So let them know. Now I have my post breaking it down, but leave me a comment. Are you a cord cutter? Are you saving money? Leave us a comment, let us know how much you're saving. I saved over $100 a month when I cut the cord. So let me know what you're saving. All right, next story up. I'm gonna try to move through these very quickly. PlayStation View is reportedly struggling to gain market share. We broke down some of the biggest reasons why we see that happening um, and try to explain why when PlayStation View was one of the first services on the market, it has struggled so mightily to um, take on newcomers like Hulu and YouTube TV and more. 
Um, according to Roku, uh, PlayStation View is now behind Philo when it looks at most popular streaming services. So I'd love to know from you, uh, why do you think PlayStation View is struggling with market share? The people who subscribe to it are overwhelmingly extremely positive. We hear every day from PlayStation View subscribers who absolutely love the service and cannot get enough of it. So, but they haven't been able to compete. Hulu, Sling TV, and more all reportedly have more than double the subscriber count now. Um, YouTube TV is also rumored to have more than double the number of subscribers of PlayStation View. So why is PlayStation View in sixth place behind all these other services, which according to um, PlayStation View subscribers are inferior to the one they love? So let me know. What is causing that? What would you suggest Sony do? And take a look at our posts as we break down the three main reasons we think that's happening. All right, good news. If you happen to live in the Netherlands, I, knew, I know we have a good number of European subscribers, but Disney Plus is now live and free for a limited time in the Netherlands. Disney has been doing closed beta testing with um, people in the Netherlands for a while. There are a few in North America, but the Netherlands, for some reason, and as a proud Dutch person, I think it, it's obvious because it's a great place to live. Uh, my grandparents came from there when they, they moved over here after they were married. Um, but the Disney Plus service has been beta testing there. Uh, but now it's live for all. So if you live in the Netherlands, you can um, sub sign up for a free account of Disney Plus, free until it officially launches in November and test it out. Now we have a bunch of screenshots of the app and more, but it's live on Android, iOS, um, Xbox, and I wanted to say PlayStation, there's another one out there. Um, uh, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Android, and iOS. I would expect Roku um, and other ones to become available soon. I'm not sure if Roku's available in the Netherlands yet. That may be an issue. But it is available there. It's being beta tested. This is what is typically called a stress test, where they come in and they say, hey, we're going to, before the official launch, try to get a bunch of people to use this, stress test it. Can we find any flaws? Can we find any problems? What's the best way for Disney to do that? Hey, Everybody in the Netherlands, it's free. So as you can expect, it jumped from basically being unrated in the Google Play Store to now the number one app in the Google Play Store because it's free Disney content. And they get the ability to test out their service before it goes launch, it launches. And this is good for Disney because most services, when people subscribe to them, they use them more heavily than they will in a few months. It's that new factor. When you get something new, you're going to use it a lot. Over a few months, that usage dies off to a more normalized level, we'll call it. So this is a good opportunity for Disney to say, hey, are we really gonna be able to handle this? What does this going to look like when it hits nationwide um, in the United States and other places? So let me know what you think, but good news, Disney is working hard to make sure the launch of Disney Plus is gonna go smoothly. And we'll let you know if we learn about any additional markets or anything else like this happening. Also, Disney has announced that Disney Plus has canceled, or I don't know if Disney announces, but it's been confirmed, excuse me, by the Hollywood Reporter, that Disney has, Plus has canceled a scripted Muppet show. So there was supposed to be a new Muppet show, something's happened, creative differences, couldn't get the actors, that kind of stuff, and now they've canceled it. So sad news for Muppet fans, no original Disney um, Plus show for now. This doesn't mean it's dead, it could very well come back, so keep that in mind. And Netflix is um, last story up of the day. And let me know what you think about Disney. If you happen to be in the Netherlands and you have Disney Plus, leave us a comment. Let us know how it's working for you. And also, they I believe they're requiring a credit card. You can't just VPN in. You have to give them a credit card with an address in the Netherlands. So they're, they heard your, your plans to try to find a workaround. And they definitely took steps to prevent that from everybody in the world trying to access it by a VPN. All right. Netflix is also, um, according to a new report from TiVo, the number one way Americans now find new movies. So we've heard this for a while that streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon were becoming the places where most Americans found new content. Now, according to a survey from TiVo's business department, which has a long history of um, studying the TV world, the streaming world, and more, according to their survey of um, North Americans, 
they say Netflix is now how the vast majority of Americans watch movies and television shows, or at least find movies and television shows. So let me know, when you're looking for a new movie or new television show, do you go to you know trailers or you're reading reviews online, or are you just browsing something like Netflix? I find myself increasingly just going, let's, let's flip through Netflix and see what we can find. So let me know if that lines up with what you've experienced in the past. Well, that's it for today. A ton of news. I hope that all made sense. If you have any questions, make sure to check out the stories in the show notes. Thank you for your support. Thank you for helping us hit 100,000. I really appreciate it. We'll be back next week with more core cutting, or tomorrow with more core cutting news, tips, and tricks. We'll be back today at noon. I thought it was Friday already. Noon for our weekly podcast. So join us live here, youtube.com slash news every Thursday at noon for the live podcast with Jess and I, where we break down some of the biggest stories from the past week and go far more in depth than I can do in this Core Cutting Today show. So thanks for your support. We'll be back tomorrow for another Core Cutting Today.